Hey folks, welcome to Easy Finances. I'm Wes, and this is a channel where we talk about your money and how to get the most out of it. As a disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor, and if you have uh, questions relative to your specific situation, you should ask a financial advisor and seek out their advice. This video series is a series on personal finance, and it's done through my own experiences and it is information that I hope to provide to my daughter to help her along her travels and, and into the working world so that she can stay ahead. I do have other video series. Uh, there's going to be ones on investing, different types of investing, types of platforms to use, that type of information. But this particular one is, is very basic in that it just touches on personal finances and what everyone should know. So in that respect, we move our, our way to the first slide, which talks about everything that I would like to cover in this whole series. Today we're just going to cover the first five things. These are the things that I think every individual should do whether they want to get further into investing or not. It's something that they should do for their personal finances and uh, something that I think is very important to pass on to my daughter. And again, it's just my personal opinion. I look forward to hearing the comments or seeing the comments down below and seeing what you have to say. So the first thing that I'm going to cover is jobs and then we'll move into savings, go touch on some CDs or certificates of deposits as an investing base so everybody should have something like that to just maintain your money and make sure that you have a, a small investment. It's not it, These are not terribly difficult things to do and they're not terribly uh, difficult to understand so hopefully I can explain it a little bit and then when you actually want to set up one we may set up one in later on in this series just to to show you how to go about doing that but uh, hopefully that'll give you a good base then we'll move to credit cards and finally Roth IRA IRA stands for an individual retirement account again every individual should have one of these uh, it's up to you to take care of yourself and make sure that you uh, are set up for retirement and ready or when you get that age, 59 and a half or older. So we'll continue on to the first step. Obviously, jobs. We need some kind of, kind of income once you become working age. It's important to have some type of income. Everybody will know that. There are many different sources of income that you could have. And of course, everybody knows the first one, a traditional job. So you trade your time for money, you go in, you show up, you do you do the work, you get paid. And everybody's, for the most part, is capable of doing that. And that's probably going to be your first instance of, of, or source of income. And the important thing to do with that is to make sure that you don't lose the money that you gain from doing that. So you're trading, trading your time for money, and then you want to make sure that you keep most of that money as much money as you can be frugal don't spend it on useless things and one way of doing that is is putting it in savings and it's also a source of income because if you get a high yield savings like I have a I have two different high yield savings accounts and one of them I use for investing purposes and the other I use for an emergency fund but one of them pays 2.25% and I think the other pays 2.2% and that's the one that doesn't keep a lot of money in there the 2.2% because <laughs> I'm moving it to investments out of there. So that's that's why I use two. One one is an emergency fund, one is an investing vehicle for cash flows. So at a regular bank you'll you'll get a very minimal interest rate. And it's not good to, to get that interest rate because you're losing money. Inflation is a problem. Inflation means that over time the value of a dollar becomes less. So what if I could buy this can of soda today for 50 cents, uh, next year it's going to cost a dollar or three years from now it'll cost a dollar. That means the value of that 50 cents has evaporated and that's inflation. So to keep up with inflation you want to have your money in savings and it's got to be a high yield savings because inflation is around 2% a year. So you get 2.25 percent. I've seen some around 2.45 percent. Uh, you can actually keep up and maybe exceed 
uh, inflation a little bit. And that's, that's what you want to do. You don't want to lose the money that you've earned. So trading time for money, you're going to pay for your expenses, right? But you're going to make sure that you have some money left over. You want to put that into a savings account or investments, which we'll talk about later on. In, in fact, next, we'll, we'll just go ahead and move on to that. Uh, so investing income is, is another source of income. You've put your money in stocks. It pays a dividend. It's coming out every month or every three months, however it is, and it comes to you, then that that is a type of income. And you will pay taxes on that, but you'll pay a lot less taxes than if you're paying in the trading time for money. So eventually what you want to do is take your time for money and transfer it into investments and savings income in which you're paying less tax and you're not having to keep working for it so that money that you've already worked for continues to work for you for the rest of your life that is the whole point of, of this personal finance gig and why you need to get a handle handle on it because you don't want to work the rest of your life and if you can retire early that's even better so what we want to do is take that time or take that money that we're we're gaining from from our time and can and put that into savings investments and make it grow and give us a passive income so that moves us into the next thing side hustles you might have something you do on the side on the weekend say if you got a full-time job during the week but you work one day a week on, on the weekends doing something that could be a side hustle you know you, you do something that's gonna make you a quick buck it's a side hustle that's something you're gonna do hobbies you might have something like photography that you do where you go around taking pictures or videos and you upload those and and it's a hobby of yours it's something you enjoy doing but you make money off of it maybe you're building furniture or something on in, in a garage woodworking whatever it is um, you could sell that maybe at a flea market do things like that those are hobbies that will make you money so Lump sums. We at some point in your life, you're going to come across some kind of lump sum, whether it's through an inheritance, a tax return, uh, something like that. You want to. That is a source of income, and you want to make sure that you're trading that in, into or turning that into investment as well. You don't want to just blow it on on something, a car, some electronic, or, or something stupid. You want to make sure that any chance you're given with extra money that you weren't expecting becomes money that is generating more money for you for the rest of your life. It'll make your life easier and uh, you'll thank me later. Let's put it that way. Um, so that brings us to our budget. It's not a source of income but it, it is our next topic. It's what we're going to move into and it's important with the budget to be frugal as I've mentioned before. You want to spend as little as possible for the things that you need in life and put the rest of that away into some type of investment. So it's making you money for the rest of your life. So that you, you don't go broke and you have a comfortable life. Let's see. Burn rate. Okay, we talk about the burn rate with, with your budget. It's exactly what I talked about. How much does it cost to provide the essentials in your life? That's your burn rate. So if, if that's you have a car payment, you have a house payment, you have insurance payment that you have to make you have uh, you have to buy gas for your car you have to buy that stuff how much does all of that cost and that is your burn rate that's the minimum amount that you have to make and through your investments what you hope to do is make enough passive income to cover all of your burn rate at that point you will be essentially financially independent and that's that's the goal you want to be independent. You want to have all your investments making enough money to cover your living expenses. And then from there on, you're, you're free to do a, a lot more things. If you don't want to work that job anymore, then don't work the job. You've got enough coming in from your investments. Hey, go do your hobby full time or go, go do those side hustles that you like all the time. Whatever it is you want to do, spend time with the family, go travel, whatever it is. But uh, it wants, once your expenses are covered, from your investments you're free to do that so budgeting will get you there being frugal will get you there you want with the budget it allows you to know where your money comes from and where it goes you'll see on paper when we go to it right here pow it's a sample budget so what I've done is throw up some random numbers of what things could cost in an area as an example 
So you have your income source, whatever it is. Maybe it's your job. Maybe it's whatever. Okay. The side hustles. You're gonna put them all, list them all there in, in the income sources here individually so you know exactly where it's coming from each amount and you're gonna have it all added up down here to your monthly income okay and then you're gonna have all your expenses and you're gonna list them all out and you're gonna put them in your monthly expense category you can flip these you can do whatever you want this is a sample budget and uh, you can do whatever list it however you want I use Excel or uh, Keynote as it were numbers what is what it is on here on, on uh, the Mac but you subtract your monthly income, or you accept, subtract your expenses from your monthly income, and you'll find out exactly how much money you have left over to invest. So for this particular example, it looks like there's $494.39 in this budget, this sample budget that I made for investing. Now, if you don't have a an emergency fund, you want to be putting that money into a savings account until you have an emergency fund that covers at least six uh, six times what your monthly expenses are that's a comfort spot and it's gonna vary per, per person that's my personal comfort spot I wanna have six times whatever my monthly expense is so it's sitting in a, a savings account and don't forget that savings account is a high yield savings account as we we talked about so it's definitely going to uh, pay us some money and that's what we're gonna move into next you don't want to lose the money that you've earned already. That's the whole game. It's a big game, this financial, this financial, personal finances. It's a game. You against the world, if you will. You are working for money, and you're working hard for money, and it doesn't come easily. Nobody's just giving you money, usually. So, if once you've earned that money, you want to make sure that you maintain it and make it work for you. Savings is one way to do that. Okay, it ensures that you're not going to lose your money. I'm not talking about savings in a in a regular bank, where it might give you 0.05 percent interest. I'm talking about putting it in something that that is a high yield savings, like 2.25 percent, 2.2 percent, 2.45 percent. I've even seen. These are things that are going to keep up with inflation, and ensure that you're not losing money, and your money is not losing value either. Those are two. Those are two very separate things. You are not losing money. That means savings, okay? And it also means that your money's not losing value because that loses you money as well. If your dollar is is worth less tomorrow than it is today, which it is, it always is. You want to make sure that you have something that's keeping up with that inflation that's erasing that dollar's uh, buying power. So savings, high yield savings, is is why you want to to use those and not just a regular bank savings what this does what having money in a savings especially emergency fund it's accessible in a short amount of time so you can get to it the banks I use are Synchrony and uh, Barclays if I want to access my money out of those I have to wait three days to transfer it to to my checking account so I put in the request today I have to wait three business days before it comes into my account I liked that a while ago. It doesn't matter to me now. I really don't need that now. I've got enough discipline that I'm not dipping into that. But uh, but I think that does help, especially early on in your financial uh, career, if you will, <laughs> setting out on your finances, is to help you be disciplined. So you can't just get it right in right into that money. So if you want to buy the the coolest iPhone or whatever it is, whatever electronic gadget there is uh, in that in that day, you have to wait three days so you got three days to think about it and you see that money leave your account go into limbo for a little bit and then pop into your checking account and then you can buy it you may not want to buy it at that point so it gives you some time and uh, then you can just add that money back in your savings account or whatever so it keeps it accessible in a short amount of time about three days and but it's not too easy to get to uh, I have two accounts one I use to fund my investments with so it's basically a cash flow. I have CDs that are generating money and putting money into that savings account. And also uh, dividends sometimes. Uh, I'll take them, put them in that savings account if I want to transfer from dividends to CDs, whatever it is. So I use it as a cash flow account. And the other one I use as an emergency fund. And if anything comes up, we just pay for, 
pay for stuff out of that. Okay, uh, the step above savings is CDs or certificates of deposit, and what we do with those, they, they pay a little bit more interest than your your high yield savings. I think my one year pays 2.75 and the two year pays 2.8 percent. And uh, you want you want to put those in because you're locking away money for a little bit longer time. Uh, as I said, a one year and a two year. That means you put that money in, and unlike the savings account, you can't access that money for one year or two year. You're agreeing with the bank not to take that money out for one or two years or however long the term is. In return, you get a little bit higher interest rate than you would in the savings account. The savings account is is instantly accessible and you can move money over at any time without penalty. In a CD, if you take that money out before the end of the term, then you will incur a penalty. It's usually three months interest, I think is what it is for mine, for my, my CDs. But uh, yeah, it, it's just a little harder to get to your money. It's money that you weren't going to be using otherwise. You can build a base for it. So what you, what you want to build as a base is a ladder system. What I have done is spent one year buying a one year and a two year CD, and hopefully we'll we'll describe this in a lot more detail later. But uh, to touch on it, it's a one year and a two year CD, and they renew automatically into two year CDs. So what that does is next year, at at this month, when that that one rolls over, it rolls over to a two year. But that it doesn't matter to me because the next year. At that at same month in April as it is that two years gonna be coming up so eventually I have it set up to where every year at the same month there's one renewing or if I choose to shut it off it just dropping into my account and that's why you want to ladder them really is so that they if if you run into financial trouble and need some kind of income steady income you can shut off those that CD ladder and start taking in that income every month that you've put in there. I bought, like I said, I buy two a month. It's a one year and a two year for one year. Did that, and then I have them set up to automatically renew. And that means every month I do it in the first week of the month, and um, that's how I set it up. And then if I ever come into financial trouble and need an extra whatever amount of money those CDs have accrued in them, I just shut those CDs renewal off and it starts dropping into my account as they fall as the terms are finished I should say and uh, that's a CD base and it it gives you a little bit of a, a cushion in life so you have your emergency funds that you can access immediately and then you have an investing base which is making more money than inflation so you're actually making money on, on this it's an it's an investment it's probably not the the greatest investment you could probably make more money and other things and we'll talk about that later but this is something important for your financial stability so that you have a base of income that will come in for a given amount of time whatever it is if you only have it set up for a year then it's for a year if you have it set up for two years great you could probably do that all the way up to five years if you wanted to depending on how conservative you want to be and how much money you wanted to have come in um, yeah I just have it pick up a certain amount of money when it renews out of my investing account there my Barclays investing account so let's say it picks up an extra hundred dollars every year when it renews that that particular CD I have 24 CDs they're renewing all the time picking up money if I don't want them to renew and I need that money then I'll just go in there and, and shut it off for that next month coming up and, and then I would receive that that money into my account when that term is up and I like having that base it's it's comforting to know that if anything should happen and income flows stop I can't work or whatever it is that we could have that little extra income, and I think that's important for everybody to have that that type of uh, comfort. All right, the the next topic that we're going to talk about is credit cards, and this is really important. I should have put <laughs> point number three here as number one. So you should only consider <laughs> using credit cards if you know you can control impulses. So if you think you're going to be an impulsive buyer and just go out and spend money that you don't have on things don't use credit cards at all so how to use them well you use them in a responsible manner and and to do that it means that you don't spend any money on them that you don't already have in sitting in your checking account so you want to make sure that you're taking advantage of the of 
the credit cards and not them taking advantage of you. So what happens is if you don't pay it off at, after a month, they charge you interest. And I think mine are 13.9% interest. That's ridiculous. That's It's hard to find an investment that would pay that well. So losing that amount of money is is insane. It's just extra money. You're paying extra for everything. And that's not how you want to use them. You want to use these to build your credit and you want to use them for their cash back rewards or point rewards, whatever it is. So you want to take the advantage of, of them building your credit and getting your rewards, but you don't want to use use them by getting the, the drawback. So don't use them if you're not going to pay it off. Don't use them if you're going to spend more money than what you would normally spend. <coughs> You want to use the advantage of the credit card. You don't want them taking advantage of you. So that is very important. And um, we'll probably have breakouts of each one of these topics in later videos. But but that that's what we're going to use our credit cards for. We're going to take that cash back, those rewards, whatever they're giving for using their credit cards. We're going to buy the things that we'd normally buy. If I have to buy gas for the car, i got to pay my insurance, whatever it is I can pay on the credit card, I'll pay through the credit card, and then as soon as it posts to my credit card, I'll pay it off. And uh, if you can't do it that way, then certainly by the by the statement date, you want to you have it paid off so that you don't incur any interest or incur any interest fees. All right. And the last thing that we're going to talk about uh, for the basics that everybody should be going through are it is the Roth IRA. IRA is an individual retirement account. The Roth gives you very specific tax benefits, meaning that anything that you put, throw in there accrues tax-free until you go to take it out. So that's a huge advantage. You can use all of that money, all those, all that income, tax-free going in there. It's it's a great advantage, and everyone needs to take care of that. You should max this out before all your other investments. Right now, you can put $6,000 a year into that, and that is what I do. It works out to about $500 a month, and I try to max this out before I put. So if I don't, if I only have $500 in a month to spend, it's all going in there. But if I have $600, then $500 is going in, into the Roth, and $100 is going into whatever other investment I'm going to choose. But I make sure that I max this out before I max all others out because of the tax benefits. You can gain a lot of money uh, from that money that's not taxed so it's a huge advantage and it just snowballs and gets bigger and bigger over time it's it's a product that everybody should know about and and take advantage of it gives you a retirement base so this if you have a 401k at work or something like that you should still have a Roth IRA also because there's different advantages and the Roth IRA is going to is, is something you can do no matter whether your workplace does it or not does a 401k or, or retirement plan or not so it's something so something you can, that's available to you and you should uh, take advantage of I say invest conservatively I like uh, putting things in ETFs on this um, I want to make sure that that, that money is going to be around and it's compounding and it's not thrown in a lot of individual companies Although I, I do like to pick some of my companies, but I would I would say for for most people you want to invest conservatively. Make sure you throw, uh, you know, ETFs. Something that's highly diversified in, into the mix. If you're not going to be picking your stocks, don't want to look at it all the time. Then go ahead and use ETFs, which are electronically traded funds. Yeah. And you're not going to remove this until retirement. If you if you do take out any of the gains that you've made out of this, you'll incur an, an extra 10% tax penalty on top of the taxes that you'd already have to pay on it. So it's definitely not worth taking that out. Um, you can, however, in a Roth IRA, take out any of the principal amount. That means the amount that you've already put in there. You just can't take out any of the money you've gained from it. So if I put $6,000 in there and it's the account has accrued and grown up to six thousand five hundred I could take out the six thousand but I can't take out the five hundred without incurring a uh, huge tax burden so why would you want to do that maybe if you're gonna put a down payment on a house that that's really the only acceptable thing I can think of or if you had debt that you were gonna pay off uh, hopefully you won't, you won't get into debt though if you're using it responsibly 
And um, yeah, that's that's the way some of those are, are used. These are, these are the basics for personal finance. This is what everybody should do. I'll go ahead and, and click back on, on the front first slide here, or the second slide I should say, and go back over what we went through. It's We went through jobs, our sources of incomes, and a budget. We added that on there. So budgeting is important. You have to have a job, you have to budget, you have to have a savings account so you don't lose the money that you, you've worked for. An investing base will give you comfort in knowing that, that you can have some kind of income coming in monthly even if you don't work. So that's pretty important. Uh, credit cards are, are important for building your credit and making all those wonderful rewards. You don't want to pay interest on those credit cards. So you do not want to be paying the minimums and you want to make sure that you're paying that off as soon as it posts or at least by the statement date on that. Uh, the Roth IRA is your retirement investing and that's going to be your, your bedrock when you turn 59 and a half. And the earlier you take advantage of that, the better because the compounding effect, uh, compounding is when you have interest, making interest. So if, if I have a, a stock that's paying $2 dividend, that $2 is going back into the account and buying more stock, which is also making more dividends. So it just builds and builds and snowballs over time. It's huge. It's, it's an amazing uh, feature of investing and it's something that's not understood and uh, we'll talk about that more later as well when we get into the investing but in future videos we're going to talk about uh, brokerage accounts or stock market investing which is different than uh, putting into your Roth IRA because you're taxed on everything on that and then real estate investing alternative investments there's a lot of things that I do that are considered alternative investments so options trading things like that and then uh, I'm going to put all that together in a system for you and hopefully make it apparent for you. But the, the first five things you should know about and everybody should be doing, and if they did that, the world would be a better place. If everybody did that for themselves, and the world would be a much better place. And it's something they probably should teach in schools, but they don't. And that's why I'm trying to teach you here. So if you have any questions, please write down in the comments and uh, like, comment, share. Hit that bell icon, uh, subscribe. The bell icon, if, if you hit that, it will alert you to future videos that are coming out in this series. And uh, if you, like I said, if you have any questions at all, please write them down, down below, and I'll get back to them. But that's all I have for this video. Thanks for sticking around. Appreciate you.